When we were thinking about this topical workshop, Blair and I were deciding what we wanted to do. And we came up with this idea that Blair mentioned to you. So as an introduction, what if, what if I knew, you knew, I knew key elements of trading that several successful traders valued as very important. Matter of fact, when we opened this question up to these traders, we gave them no context. We said, we would like you to share maybe your top three to five, and some of them, some people gave us more than that, top three to five things that you wish you knew earlier on in your trading career. So what if I knew, what if you knew key elements of trading that several successful traders valued is very important? How could that impact your trading from the beginning? And that's one of the reasons why Blair asked about where you are in your journey, because there's going to be some opportunities. If you're brand new, this is going to be a different type of potential influence for you than if you've been trading for a while. And then I know that there are some people in here who have been trading with Tradeway for quite a while. Each person's going to get a little bit different, hopefully, influence or perspective or benefit from this. How could this impact your trading from the beginning, your trading now? And probably most important, because we can't change the past, you're trading in the future. Notice there's a but there. And a but means that, okay, we have to consider something. Now, the consideration is, would I listen? Would I learn? And would I, most importantly, apply the wisdom from these keys that are shared by these successful traders? So we call this five by five loud and clear. That was the topic of this. We ask five experienced traders, tradeway coaches, trainers, people that teach you, have the, have the opportunity and honor to teach you tradeways philosophy of training or trading and work with you in different ways across our educational curriculum to help improve your trading. We ask them to give us some of their keys to their trading success that have come from there. And I put this word down very importantly, experiential learning. These things were not just ideas that were taught to them. They've actually experienced the importance and the power, sometimes positively and sometimes from a negative reinforcement perspective as to what we want. Now, guys, Blair mentioned that it's going to be a short hour, Ben said maybe hour and a half, depending on our content, which is good. We're not going to, Blair and I were talking last night, we could almost, and we might in the future, almost take many of these and make them expanded topical workshops. So we're not going to be able to go into the nitty gritty detail of a lot of these, but you're going to have a lot of ideas. If you know how to take a screenshot of your computer, you're probably going to want to have some opportunities to do that in a few minutes as we share these different elements that came from very different personalities. Oh, by the way, I did not change the style of the statement or question or idea that was presented by these traders. You're gonna see that, you're gonna see it in exactly the wording that they presented to Blair and I. I didn't change them, okay? So this, come, this comes directly from the heart. More specifically, these address elements of their trading that they wish they had learned, embraced, or put into practice much earlier in their trading careers. So you guys remember back to step one, we talked about that concept of compression of learning. This trading or this, this webinar, this topical webinar is an element of hopefully compression of learning and that you're learning from the things that work well and in a lot of cases, the things that didn't work well or opportunities that they had to adapt and adjust to, to get them to the level of success that they are now. So here's what I want you to ask yourself as you look at these. Have I experienced any trading situations where applying these keys would have improved my trading? Now, we've got a lot of people in here that maybe you're working on stocks and in and, and this idea that we need to get into options. Okay, part of it may be hold, what's holding you back from making that next step forward in your education to getting into options. And even if you've been to step two, what's holding you back from being part of step three and step four in terms of learning spreads? But even on the level of stocks, even if you're brand new, you can ask yourself, have I experienced any of these situations where applying these keys would have improved my trading? Now, have I heard of any of these before? Now, I know the answer to that is going to be yes for any of you that have been around for any period of time with us. Some of these things you're going to hear, but they still came back as the, the, the learning lessons that are still deep in the soul, trading soul of, of our coaches and traders. 
as to things that really they wish they'd have done better with or learned better earlier on in their training career. Have I heard any of these before? If you have heard of these before, have you put into action the elements of this understanding? And have you created an opportunity that if you needed to, that you changed your trading using this wisdom? So if you've heard these things before, what have you done with these things before? Okay. Now, if no, you haven't heard these things before, we still kind of have two groups here. Those of you that are brand new, I was talking to Blair last night, you may have actually the best opportunity because as you write these down, take screenshots, appreciate and learn from the experience up front, it may help accelerate your learning. It may help accelerate your um, ability to think a little bit deeper about your trading, whether or not it's stocks or options, and maybe help prevent, help prevent, but not eliminate your ability of going through some of the trials and tribulations of learning to be a successful trader. If you haven't heard these before, you're an experienced trader, I'll bet you can come back again and say, have I experienced any of these situations, which would be a prob probable yes. And therefore, as I come down here, what's important for everybody as we leave today, what action steps will I take after this topical workshop to change my trading in some way? Maybe that's getting a piece of education. Maybe that's working on a market corner or through the online study groups or the community pages to get a little bit deeper understanding. Maybe it is utilizing the opportunities that we have in Trader Pro and Trader Max in our 30 day challenges. Maybe, maybe it's using some of the elements that we have in our trading education around comprehensively around our trading. But the goal is you have to have some kind of action step to change where you are in order to get where you wanna go. The other thing I'd like to say here is that I think I have it on another slide as well. Look for the commonality across the traders insights that they provide. Um, these were all independent. The information was sent from these different traders completely independently. They did not know what the other individuals were providing. And yet there is some, there are some consistent themes that come through, which just makes it really smart trading, okay? So when we look at these insights, they are in no specific importance order because they're not listed and ranked in any kind of, of importance or in order by the individual traders. And again, here's this common element of looking for commonality in concept, commonality in the experience that the traders had, commonality in the wisdom across the different traders' insights. What does this say to all of us? Is that if we see independently five different traders who are giving insight into key areas of their experience and it's consistently the same insight, the importance of that by their experience is, is pretty powerful, okay? So again, no specific order. We're gonna now look at Trader's Insights. I wish I'd known that I had a gambler's spirit. And Blair actually commented on this because he hadn't heard this from this particular individual. Some of you may have heard this individual say this before. And who the individuals are, we're not, we're not hiding who those are. This would have been Ben Russell, Jared Russell, Jeffrey Nance, Blair Nightingale, and myself. We are the five individuals who contributed our, our views to, to this topic of workshop. But think about what a gambler spirit means. It means realizing that maybe you are that aggressive trader. Now, that doesn't make it good or bad. This individual just thought that when they really understood that it helped them put things in context a little bit more. It helped them evaluate the way they looked at risk or their expectations of their trades. But they understood what I think is most important, Blair, is they understood something about their own personality and how that personality trait could then impact their trading. Same person. So we'll list all the ones that came from a particular trader. I wish I'd known how credit spreads really worked. Yeah, we go through step three. And for those of you that aren't there yet, you can have that opportunity to be part of credit spreads with us. I also echo that credit spreads, when you understand how to use them effectively, can be a really powerful strategy. But this particular person learned to use credit spreads very, very well. But the goal is, is that they wish they'd understood them better earlier. They wish that they understood how they really worked. They weren't hesitant to be able to learn how to use them. And they've now become a big part, not the only part, but Blair, a big part of how that particular trader one of the strategies that they tend to use quite a bit. 
I wish I had known that consistent smaller profits over time is a better outcome, at least for this trader, a better outcome than just looking at the higher ROI trade setups that don't consistently produce profits. Some of you have heard about my trader's triangle and it, how it looks at risk and reward and probability. And I'm working on Trader's Triangle 2.0, which I shared briefly this last weekend at the workshop three during one of the breaks. I showed it to Ben and to Jared. I said, what do you think? And they loved it. So that'll be one of the things that I'm getting ready to, to, to share with our Tradeway family after I do a little bit more work on it. But this idea that in a trade, small profits, or I like the word, and you'll see it come up in a couple of places, consistency, is one of the things that traders through their experience and through the development of the maturity as a trader really often look for. And that, yeah, high ROI, high ROI is great, but this person developed a different personality or different way of looking at their trading over time. So I, I'll just jump in here quick, Ross. Sure. Um, I've just been, you guys have been lighting up the Q&A here, so I've been back there. Uh, Bill, Bill sent in a question. He just asked something I want to highlight on here. So for example, uh, looking at number three, it, you know, uh, Ross highlighted consistent or versus you can see in the second half of that sentence, don't consistently produce. And Bill was saying, well, can we define successful a little bit? You know, I know you guys can't share results, but let's define that. Well, look at this third point for an example here, okay? This could be true for me, for Ross, for Bill, for anybody out there. What is, what is consistency? Consistency. And part of what I would mention, I wish I would have known, consistent smaller profits over time is, this is a huge word, better, a better arc outcome than higher ROI trade setups that don't consistently produce. So the goal here in all the training, even though you may have different account sizes, you may have different financial goals, whatever that might be, you want to get to a place where there's consistency. There's a tipping point that over a series, 10, 20, 50 trades, right? We have a win ratio that's growing the account, right? We're just headed in the right direction uh, over time versus looking for those big home runs. And, and that's certainly something I can relate to as well. Coming in, you know, part of it is we learn, Ross, you know, the power. We might be have making 7 8% a year, maybe if you've got somebody who's doing a little bit better than that. But that's kind of the ballpark of what a lot, a lot of us are used to making in a year or would expect. Some of us, like myself, we didn't even have a financial advisor. This is so new. I was so green to all this. That wasn't even my framework. So then you start seeing 20, 30, 40, 50, 110, 200% debit spreads, all this kind of stuff. Um, consistency, consistency, such a huge, huge lesson where, and I think this is in later in the notes, Ross, but we talk about these base hits. So I want to hit on that because this consistent piece is really a huge part of that. What does consistency look like for you? And, and it can take some of the pressure off, Ross. I don't have to go out and hit a home run in every trade, right? And I don't have to try to take the kind of risk that is required for a home run in every trade. And I'm not failing. I'm not falling off. If I'm not achieving triple digit returns in every single trade, but actually over a series of trades, that actually can be a huge, huge deal. So uh, I think that's uh, really important in terms of um, uh, the question we got there. Brad says, amen to that. I went for a long time taking big losses with small gains. I watched my account shrink and realized if something doesn't change, it'll drain my account, right? Base hits, base hits, uh, consistency over time. That's huge, really huge. And several of the comments that Blair made, you're going to see and echoed in other comments that are made by uh, other traders as we go here through here. Bill, I think one of the things, one of the easiest things to answer your question about what that would look like is literally the reason why Blair and I kind of had this on our hearts that it would be a good element. 
to talk about topically. Some of the things that you're seeing through these different traders are the steps that they made. Where, when they made them in their journey would vary. And they're actually telling you that they wish they had made many of these earlier in their journey to really address the original question that you had. Um, everybody has slightly different goals, but it does come back. And this, this concept of the trader's triangle, it does come back to the biblical perspective that if we only focus on high ROI, there's going to be risk there. And have we actually looked at the risk? And when there is greater risk in a trade, that potentially can impact our probability of the trade. And from at least one perspective of win-loss ratios may impact our consistency. Because if I'm taking higher risk trades, and it's kind of interesting that lots of students don't think that step two trades are risky, from some elements around the step two trade compared to a spread, they have more risk. They have a different kind of risk, which is why we build on this in our market corners and in our study groups and those types of elements. But Bill, for right now, I'd say probably a thing that you said when you wanted to identify what, and you said annotate what changes they made, they're telling you right now. They're telling you the things in their career that later on, and all of these guys are things from a time perspective that they wish they had done earlier. Matter of fact, as the fourth point here, I wish I'd made the choice to buckle down and start earlier and not let things get in the way of my trading journey, okay? This trader talks about that a lot, that some people, we use other things in our life and excuses of just not buckling down, studying, reviewing, coming back to a course, joining an online study group, using our membership and the things that we've invested in to get our education. Guys, one of the, I didn't put it as one of my, my top lists, but I'll tell you that one of the things that really helped me is when I finally buckled down and made trading a priority, not necessarily trading in the market a priority, but learning to trade right. priority, right. getting the education, practicing, uh, participating, communicating. We have so many different ways of doing that now when I engaged in learning to become a better trader more diligently and made it a priority, my trading got better. And I didn't let excuses uh, or I didn't let welcomed interruptions interrupt that. So I set my mm -hmm. own schedule. I placed a certain amount of time that I was going to study and practice. And the purpose of that is because I had a goal of truly making this serious for me and wanting to become better at my, my trading skills. So I think that what we're doing today, Bill, will go very, very appropriately towards answering a big part of your a big part of your question. So there were the five, there were four insights there. This person sent five, and Blair and I saw one thing as we looked through these. There was one insight that was repeated on almost every trader's comment list. So we actually pulled it off. And we're saving it to the last, being the number one trading insight that was provided by almost everybody. And even traders that Blair echoed, and even very experienced traders that Blair echoed, he's heard that same thing from other traders recently. So this person sent in five. We pulled one off because we're leaving it till the end to tell you the number one insight. This, and some of that might surprise you. I, I told, sorry, go ahead, Rob. Okay. Some of it, it might surprise you what it is, but it just shows the power of their experiential wisdom and why that is so important. Blair, is something you wanted to add there? Well, I was going to say, for those of you that maybe watched my interview with Dr. Jim from over there at Tastyworks a couple weeks, maybe a month back now, this is the number one thing he said. So when we saw this as a pattern from each person, I mean, there's some overlap here, right? It's not like all these experiences from these coaches and traders are going to be totally different. Some but there's overlap. Well, there was one, like Ross said, that was very significant. But Dr. Jim also brought that to the table as his number one. In fact, he only gave one. He didn't give five. It was just one. And it was this one. So we want to share that at the end, too. But um, definitely uh, lighten up the comments here, Ross. A lot of Good. people going, hey, this is speaking to me. Because Good. if you've done up. some of this process, you know. That's what I mean, right? There's overlap. We, we, we know this thing. I'm interested to know, like... This is a personal thing for me. I wish I would have known I had a gambler spirit. I just like the way that Ben said that. How many people out there, when you started trading, now we I know we got to keep moving here. We're already 25 minutes over the hour. 
How many of you out there, tell me in the comments, that was you. Now, you may not want to share that. Some people may not want to share that. I had that. I had no, it didn't feel like that. I didn't know what that's what that was. I just liked going out and getting in the market. And the reason I say that now is because I learned a lot of the things you guys are going to learn today. But you know what? I didn't implement it. I didn't do it. You know why? Because I'd rather just go out and get in. And the reason I'd rather just go out and get in is because that's exactly what I was doing. And I didn't know that, Ross. I had no idea, right? I, and I'm seeing all kinds of comments. Yep. And then sometimes yep. where the market teaches you or kind of slaps you a little bit that says, okay, but I'm out here well, and I've got my side of this market as well. And we can learn that maybe we need to reflect and understand that aspect of our personality. And also then it's where we often will start to appreciate the idea of not just looking at profit, but risk. When people go to... and the idea of gambler here, we'll use another example. When people go to Las Vegas and they participate in all those opportunities and bells and whistles are in front of them, of course they're coming in looking at the profit potential. They're not always looking at the loss potential or at least accepting and understanding the risk and the loss potential. So the gambler spirit can mean different things. It can mean that I'm really focusing only on the profit. It can mean that I'm putting a little bit more at risk financially than I'm ready to go. You guys have heard me say that I believe in, in a trader's career, there's two large phases. There's the trading to learn phase, and there's the trading to earn phase. A gambler spirit sometimes means that I want to skip the trading to learn phase, trading with defined risk, trading right. with more control. And I just want to go to the trading to earn phase. And, and some people are more successful or less successful at that than others. So really, really good insight. All right. All right. Let me bring in the notes. Let me bring in the next trader. The reality that acting on my plan is drastically more valuable, excuse me, than any, let me get out of that. I want to fix that guys. I, that's my mistake. And I will, there we go. The reality that acting my plan is drastically more valuable than the result of any single trade occurrence. I bet you guys, if you just heard that, it might apply to more than one trader, but guys, this was Jared's list. And again, we asked for these independently. Ben was the last list uh -huh. that we had. Here's Jared's list. That's there. Boy, I can just hear Jared's voice saying that. And for those of you that have had a chance to, to work and learn from Jared, you just see that, you know, plan your trade and trade your plan. But notice he, he he's bringing in this element, kind of, the, kind of a unique piece here of what that plan is. And that plan is more important than the result of the trade. Because the plan is what dictates the only thing that we have control over. We don't have control of, over the result of the trade because it is in the future. The only thing that we can control is our plan up to entry. After that, we still have to have a part of our plan that is management, a part of our plan that is how we manage our emotions. But if we don't have that plan in place, Jared says over and over and over again, you're just setting yourself up for doom for what happens later in the trade. The massive importance of an unbiased analysis of what the markets are doing, not what I want them to do. How powerful. This is one that I could easily put on my list. My list wouldn't be five. My list would be 50 items long of what I've learned. But this is so incredible. And it's not easy. Because once we're putting money in the market, we have expectations of what we want the market to do. And we even have expectations of what we think the market will do because we enter a trade based off of that expectation of what the market 100%. will do. But we don't have control over that. So yes, we want that edge. Blair talks about that edge often. Jared talks about that edge. We want to enter the trade with what we feel is a, probably, uh, a probabilistic, a greater probability of an edge. But I really like what Jared says here and how he says it unbiased. I need to know and I need to accept the market can go either direction. And then I need to trade according to that. And this is really hard for new traders to do. And this doesn't matter if it's stock or an option or a spread. Okay, The market is the market. And all of what we do is based off of stock price movement. So we're all stock traders. Okay, But our unbiased analysis of what the markets are doing 
uh, and there's a comment that comes in here in just a second with Jared and another trader that tends to work against this and it creates a bias that we have to be careful of. The ability, the wisdom, and the discipline. And I love the way he said this. Ability, yep. that's knowledge. You've actually learned something. Wisdom, though, which can be formed by experience, um, wisdom also helps form the idea of the importance of that knowledge. And then I love the idea of discipline. You just have to act. You have to do it to accept the market condition instead of trying to force my will upon it. So in one way, Jared is taking the same concept, Blair, as his first or his second statement here, but bringing it down to a personal level of the ability to do it, the importance of actually accepting it and doing it, and then the discipline to act on that unbiased analysis. So there, it's kind of a little bit of a, a theme that's built here, but they're two yeah. very separate statements. And you, and you, you know, you've heard Jared talk about that over the years too. I mean, that's part of the, the process and, and, um, you know, think about the market right now, right? We're in transition, even this, this week, I would say this week in the last few sessions at the end of last week, you know, we're not even at the hundred we're, we're crushing through it, then above it, then through it, then above it. So we're hovering around this area, right? There's things that are in transition. So let's just make this practical for a second, right? It's transitioning. I'm not saying the bull market's over. I'm not saying we're not going to get back into an uptrend. Actually, you don't know that. That's part of Jared's point. We've got to let it tell us what it's going to do. But it is not what it's been for the last, even just to say conservatively, six months. We've been in a pretty clean, solid uptrend. And I know some folks have been trying to force a square peg into a round hole, although it didn't really feel like that. It just felt like, well, I've been able to do X, Y, and Z consistently over the last six months or a year. And now that things are changing, it's harder for me to let that go and step back. Let's just take this as a practical example and then I'll, I'll, we'll, we'll keep moving. What about patience? What would the ability, wisdom, and discipline to accept the market condition look like if we put a title on it today and just said, patience? I'm going to wait. I'm going to stay out for a bit. Now, let's just frame this a little more. Maybe you've been in. Maybe you've seen some more consistency coming in. Maybe that's been really great. Maybe that's the first time you had it. Maybe it's not, right? But patience to stay out, that's, that's part of it. Accepting a market condition. We're in a squirrel market. We're in a transition. Ross, I was telling some people last night, you know, I'm out here in California now. I can look out the window. I can just start to see some of the leaves turning brown, right? The season hasn't changed yet. It's still summer. It's 97 degrees the other day. It was 99 degrees the day before that. It's very hot. But you know what? The night is getting a little cooler at night. Little bit brown leaves. Like some things are starting to shift. We're on the edge of the transition. We just haven't made that yet. That's how the market kind of feels right now. And this is a normal thing for trading. Things change. So we have to change, but that can be harder to do right? That can be a hard, especially for new people. I think that's part of the heart of what Jared's getting after here. So how about accepting some of the things that you've learned how to do, but find that you just don't do them yet, right? That's where this ability piece comes in for me that Jared talked about. Awesome. All right. Next on Jared's list. And some of these will be five. Some of them will be four. Some of them will be three. Some of them will be six. Different traders have different number of, of, of insights that they want to provide. A longer term perspective of what success means in trading. So, Bill, we're back to this idea of success. And oh, by the way, guys, success can mean something very different to each of you. Um, I would be I would be hesitant if you define success in trading by too rigid of, an, of a measurement or a metric, like your win-loss ratio is a metric of success, but it doesn't mean that you're not successful if you don't have a win-loss ratio above 50%. If when you have 50% of your wins, you have a nice strong profit and 50% of your trades need to be closed for a manageable expense, that's a very very important and powerful successful plan. That's a form of consistency. So there is an element, in my opinion, of consistency and success that can be individualized. One of the challenges, I did not put it on my list, but one of the challenges that happened early on that I had to break because it was not good for me is I, I tried 
I tried to force myself to be like some other trader, some other person mm -hmm. that I was learning from. But maybe their style of trading or their personality of trading or their way of looking at their trades and their patterns and their management strategies may or may not have worked for me. That doesn't violate Tradeway's philosophy of trading. Tradeway's philosophy of trading at its core actually allows for a diversity of trading styles and personalities of people to work within the same system, which is fantastic. It's one of the reasons that I like being part of the educational team for Tradeway. Well, how you define success, I would say in one way, at least a metric of all of us, regardless of the goals of what you want to do with your financial resources, the purpose of being in trading is for all of us to make money. Money is the goal of the trading so that we can do other things with those finances. Our goals in life are different. So one metric of being successful is that over a longer period of time, and this is where I'm coming back to Jared's comment, longer term perspective, not day to day, not very short term outlooks because the market changes over a longer period of time, what does success look like? Jared says, very short-term outlooks of my plans caused me to adjust too quickly, thereby, therefore, or thereby, preventing the probability of the trade working out. Yep. Okay. So there are some traders, no doubt, that look to have a very, very small stop out. Okay. And that means that they will not allow a trade to move very far in the wrong direction before, because of their goal, they will stop that trade out very quickly. I learned, Jared has experienced as well, I learned more because of my work requirements of working full-time and doing this. I needed to know that maybe my mentality was, is that I wasn't as good on all, I hated stop outs that the trade turned around and actually worked well. I needed to study and understand where was that line or was that, we talk about this all the time, the premise of the trade, where I was willing to exit this trade because it was not working based off of expectations. And David Mitchell, even when he talked about even the concept of the David Mitchell stop out rule, was looking at allowing a trade some room of movement before we just cut it loose. Jared's echoing a little bit that when his plans caused him to adjust too quickly, that could be taking profits too quickly, that could be closing a trade much more aggressively too quickly, it prevented the probabilities of the trade working. And that's one of the things that he's found. If you're on a market corner with me, or even on a course when I get a chance to teach with you guys, you guys will hear that I try and share with you different perspectives of understanding where that, where that trade breaks down. If you had Jeffrey, Jared, Blair, me, Ben in a room, we might all have a slightly different way that we look at that. Jared's mentioning here, and he does it in the way that he sets up his trades. He does it in a style that he does in his charting. He wanted to give his trades opportunities and probabilities of working out. And he adjusted the way he traded because he found if he kind of what I call strangles the trade a little bit too much, then he found that when he adjusted too quickly, it, incre it, it increased the or it hurt the probabilities of his trades working out. So there's some real wisdom there. I, I've, I've actually learned from, Blair, I've learned from Jared, um, I've learned from Ben, and then I, may, I have to make those things work for me. But I will say that one of the things I had to be careful of is not trying to make myself completely emulate one particular trader unless the element in the style of that trader worked well for me or once I understood where they were coming from and why they did what they did, that made sense to me. So a couple things, we've got some good questions here. You know, I, first of all, one of my thoughts that, you know, Ross is highlighting the micro application, right? Of what that last um, point from Jared is. For me, looking at a bit of a macro, zoom out a little bit, a, a long-term perspective of success is success in trading. What are we doing? Well, we can't guarantee that any tr one trade is going to be right, right? I'm bursting the bubble maybe for some people, but many of us have learned this. You, you cannot guarantee using the system correctly that any one trade is going to be profitable. What, what does it do? It gives us an edge over time, over time. So part of what I see in Jared's point here, and I know this is true for a lot of us out there, you know, if I do three trades 
and I win one out of three, then I might go and I change my approach. I change my strategy. Ross mentioned the stopouts. Maybe I change that. Maybe I go after a different pattern. Maybe I change my position size, right? One or many aspects of my plan, I may change it. And part of what I think Jared is saying here as well is that, wait a second, I need a sample size. It's not all about one trade. It's very easy for us as traders, especially new, to think about the trade we are in and forget about the fact that it's connected to 15, 20 other trades. And it's that sample size. It's really going to give me the data I need. I need to trade a plan over time. But if I just keep adjusting, it creates a randomization in my results. And that's part of what he's saying, you know, thereby preventing the probabilities from playing out. What does that mean? It means that you ought to have a plan, work with a coach, develop a plan. And when I work with people, and I'm sure Ross does the same thing, I want to say, all right, let's make an adjustment here and let's do five, 10 plus trades and then come back and see what did that do? What did that change? Let's let that play out. And then we can go, all right, we need to make maybe this change or that change now, right? But that consistency happens over time. So success, this is why success is, is, is so important. And, and, and you can see Jared even put it in, right? Quotations, success. Because there are different pieces of success. There's success in profit. There's success in process, can you do 10 trades and not change anything, right? I mean, you, you'll have different market conditions to some degree. You maybe do different tickers, but can you successfully execute 10 trades and not break the plan, right? I would highly define that as success. If a student and I are working together and you come to me and you be like, Blair, I did it. I did 10 trades. I did exactly what we decided to do, right? Obviously the market didn't always cooperate. We didn't have control over that. We just had control over me. If you can tell me, Blair, I did 10 trades. And for the most part, I had control over me. I'm absolutely going to call that a success, right? Regardless of your P&L, you can work on that. But um, that's pretty important to look at. So um, yeah, and as Blair again, brought, there's, the, there's as Blair no brought that forward, Blair, I knew that there was another element coming up. So he, 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 he was ahead of the game, that it is this sample size element, without a doubt. Uh, and guys, this is where I think sometimes when we're new and we're hesitant, you know, we're, we're, we're actively trading with real money slower. This is where I would have a very serious conversation with you as a, as a student, if I was working with you as a coach, on the idea that the trades that you learn from do not always have to be just the ones that you have real money in. The, the idea of paper trading, diligent, disciplined paper trading is massive. There was a period of time when I was in my concentrated learning phase. I can't risk, I didn't wanna risk a huge amount of money in the market, but I, I needed the experience of times in the batter box, time in trades. So probably for every one active real money trade I had in the market, if conditions were proper, I may have done another seven to 10 paper trades, same discipline that Blair's talking about, same setup, same practice. The market is the market. It gives us far more opportunities to trade than usually we will put financial risk up in the trade. But why wouldn't I still be practicing the same element of whether it's an execution on my brokerage? Because you know what? If I have 10, if I have 20 well-defined, disciplined trade examples, and five of them were real money trades, and 15 of them were, were paper trades done with discipline and with record keeping and with charts and with a plan written down, and I see my consistency across those 20 trades, it will improve your confidence and your yes. ability to apply it. 100%. But if the only thing you do is wait for 20 real trades that might take you a much, much longer period of time. I had a discussion with a, one of our students who's been around for a long, long time. And he's one of those people that we were at a particular workshop. And he said, yeah, you know, I just don't really like paper trading because I don't really see the purpose of it. There's no skin in the game. And I said, you're looking at the wrong, you're looking at the wrong metric of skin. 
you're looking at that there's no real money in it, but what about your own experience of learning and experience of responding to the market in a real dynamic way that a paper trade can give you? And I challenged him to really think about using paper trades. And it was, this was specifically on credit spreads. I saw him probably six months later at another course. And towards the end, I wasn't teaching the course. I just happened to be there. At the end of the course, he actually raised his hand and he kind of said, you know what, I got to let everybody know. Um, I took some advice and started paper trading, disciplined paper trading more frequently along with my real trading. And of my last 40 credit spreads, I only had to significantly manage four of them. And I can tell you that that changed my confidence and it changed my experience of what I learned from practicing the craft and the art of trading and not just in real trades, but in paper trades as well. He accelerated his learning. So you can take the idea, and I saw a comment that was up there, Blair, the one that you just pulled out of the question. Yep. For some of us, we try and put too much pressure on our trading. We look at, and I saw something, you know, I, I've got half of this amount of money that I want to that I want to buy a new car with, or I'm older and so I know I really need to get this account going. That's fine, but I'm going to say that that potentially puts different pressures on you to accelerate the financial side of growth and your trading success, and you may not be there yet. So. You need to earn the right to trade more money and earn the right to trade more aggressively by the things that we're sharing here and letting what Jared's comment here, your perspective over 25 trades to be the way that you look if something needs to be adjusted. As just, just what Blair said, not adjusting because my last three trades didn't work. So I'm really glad that, that Blair brought that in. Um, the value of building say confidence here. through a systematic approach instead of judging the results in dollars alone. Go ahead, Blair. Well, I was just going to say that literally that next point there, that's that's a huge part of what I was getting at before. And I mentioned this on the boot camp and some of the other webinars. I know some other coaches frame it a different way, but I think again, profit process, right? I talk about root and fruit, good roots, good fruit. We chase fruit without root doesn't work, doesn't happen. In fact, the Lord tells us what happens when we receive the word, but we don't get roots. What happens? Challenge comes and it dries up because we don't have a root. We need to get roots. Everything we're talking about today is good root systems. And roots take time. They take time to grow. They take time to get depth. That's something that we have to do uh, over time. And, and I think when I, when I look at Jared's point of not just judging results in dollars alone, which Ross said accurately, we're never trying to skirt the point of like, what are we trying to do here? Make money. Like it's not in question. That's not a gray area here. We're trying to make money. We want to see your accounts grow and grow significantly. That's what we want. Now you each have your own uh, goals that you've defined, but it's it's process and then profit. And if we don't understand that we ought to have goals in our process, then we don't understand that root precedes fruit. And if I have good roots, which is process in trading, by the way, it's discipline, it's wisdom, like Jared mentioned at point number three there, then we're not going to see changes, right? It doesn't help us to see the PL and I, I want to improve it no matter what it's doing uh, and try to improve it by just trying again to improve it based on the same root system that we use to create the results we now have. To say that more simply, if I want different results, I got to change the root system, right? So that's what we're doing here. So he says a more systematic approach process step by step not the sexiest word ross if i can use that term today yeah. but it is it is in fact somebody said in the comments uh trading is fun going back to the gambler spirit getting in is fun there's an emotional charge that can come from it depending on where we're at in our trading uh but you know bookkeeping and planning and doing some of the study you know that's not always so fun um so it, it takes it takes a holistic approach here. We do want to judge results in dollars, but not dollars alone, like uh, uh, Jared shared here. 
Yeah, see, Annette, you, I'm glad for your comment. You, you, you stated the trap about paper trading. You said, because I get upset if I don't make the real money. Okay. And I, and I put in my response to you, that's the trap. The purpose of trading, trading, paper trading should be different. It's not that you can't trade with real money, but exactly how many trades, how much experience can you get if I don't use some other, and here's the word I used, don't use some other form of practice. Guys, if you're a professional athlete, you already are very, very good at what you do. Does that mean that you don't spend time in the batter box? Does that mean that you don't spend time on the driving range? Does that mean you don't spend time in practice? Practice that has different risk to it, but it is diligent, disciplined practice. I don't care how you practice, but you can only risk. You can only experience so many trades in real money, with real money in the market compared to the, and I'm just giving you my experience when I did it with a disciplined approach, I magnified how fast I created confidence. And then I can start trading with larger amounts of money or being more confident, not in more trades necessarily, but just more risk at trades because I've learned and earned through my consistency and success that Jared's talking about here that I'm ready to do something bigger in the market. There you so go. And, and you've got to be able to practice in some way to accelerate your experiential learning or else it can be a, a slow go. All right. Uh, I got to say that I'll say this really quick. Oof, that's a good one. I told you, Ross told you guys at the beginning, we we're, we're going to have plenty to cover here and we can <laughs> spend a lot of time on each and Lord we'll, willing, we'll, go, we'll, we'll go do to, more of this in the future, huh? We'll go to I, an hour I, and a half, but we might need to have another topical workshop. Exactly. Like exactly. Well, okay. I'll, I'll say this very quick. Cause we got some questions I saw. They say, you know, and, and I'll give the specific instance, uh, you know, some of us, or at a place in life where we're either retired or we're looking to retire in that we're very close to that. There's one example of something that can say, I need to move quicker. So I tend to be less patient. I tend to be more aggressive. And there's a feeling like I need to do that. Now, there are different ways that we, we could be more aggressive and still have a root system. But I would say this, you know, I got nailed by, in fact, I used to have a sticky Ross, a sticky note on my computer. I've got a new computer since, but it had this scripture that the one in ha who acts in haste leads surely to poverty. Um, it's a proverb. And, and here's the thing I would say to any of our justifications to, to rush. Now, I'm not saying justifications to say, hey, I have some urgency and I want to be more aggressive in my learning and potentially in my trading, that's one thing, but I'm going to rush. What ends up happening is it actually slows you down, right? Rushing doesn't actually accelerate you. Patience and process actually ends up being the acceleration. Now, I don't have that retirement at my doorstep scenario, but I can tell you that in general, I can be a very impatient person. Let's do the quick... Now, this isn't true in many areas of my life, but in some areas it's true. Some of you can relate to me. It's the quicker payout. It's the easier thing. It's the short-term benefit versus the long-term payoff. Root versus fruit. I don't think rushing ends up actually accelerating us where the paradox is that some patience actually ends up being the thing that helps you move faster, right? That certainly can be true. So I wanted to hit that quick uh, before you jump into that last one there, Ross. Accepting that I have zero control over the market. All I can do is observe, interpret, and most importantly, act on the information and then manage the results. This one actually comes full circle back to the beginning. I left it at the end. This is the way Jared put it in. But notice that his last comment comes directly back to his first comment. Uh, his first and second comments, actually. Actually, his first, second, and third comments. As you'll see, he's come for so full circle here. So it shows you... Um, it shows you what he thinks is so important in his, in his development. Uh, guys, you would have possibly heard me say what trading, how, one of the ways that I look at what trading is, especially technical analysis, is that we are taking historical information, which is right in front of us. We know the truth, what the chart said in the past. We're applying it in a current situation, historical information applied in a current situation. What is, what is the chart doing now? Where is the chart now? And we have to make our decision now. Historical information applied to a current situation to predict and plan for a future event of which we have no control of. The only thing we have control of is the probability and the edge that we see now. 
structuring a trade in a way that it makes sense according to a set of guidelines or rules or suggestions that I've developed with Tradeway. And then as Jared says here, understanding I have zero control moving forward, not letting the market, not telling the market what to do, but watching and evaluating what the market does and then observing what it does, interpreting what it's doing and acting on that information to manage the results of the trade once I'm in it. Okay, very, very powerful element that's here. All right, next trader. I wish I'd known the value of understanding when a trade wasn't going to work and stopped out much sooner. Now, all you got to see is stopped out much sooner. And you know that this is Jeffrey Nance's, if Blair's laughing, I can see him over there right now. But yes, it is this idea. And I don't, I, I, what, if I was, if I had Jeffrey here, like Jeffrey and I do the market corner threes and the fours, I think that Jeffrey would say it wasn't long before he understood when the trade wasn't going to work. And more importantly, his willingness to just accept that and then stop out when he's accepting that the trade is not working properly. Now, I also agree because Jeffrey is a tremendously talented technician. As he grew in his trading education and he grew in his trading experience, he got better at understanding what he expected the stock to do based off of its actions after it got in the trade and where it was right now. No doubt, we always create a depth of experiential wisdom as we move along. For those of you that were on Market Corner 3 last week, though, we had a pretty in-depth conversation about, I think, one of the biggest problems, and Blair, a lot of students shared, it was about credit spreads and understanding when they were going to stop out. This will even be, I don't care if you're a stock trader, option trader, spread trader, doesn't matter where you are in your career. I think the bigger problem is that not individuals don't have a place that they say, yes, this is where I want to get out, but they get there and they don't get out. They get there and they don't respond. Mm -hmm. So without yeah. a doubt, this would have been a, what, a, what I would have expected Jeffrey's first comment to be. I mean, so many of these things, guys, I remember, for those of you who remember Mark Wilburn, I saw a video from him when I was, I was pretty new. I wasn't brand new, but pretty new. And he talked about one of the biggest pivots for him, interesting to bring some of his stuff in, this wasn't intentional, but he said, I had to take responsibility for my trading. And I, I think all of these points to some degree are really going to be reflective of that. What does it look like for me? Not to say that everything is easy. Some of you are commenting and you're saying, I'm, I'm in process in this area. I'm aware. I'm even working on it. I haven't necessarily got the breakthrough in it that I want yet or whatever the case might be. Maybe you have. So I'm seeing some of those comments as well. But I have to take responsibility for... Um, my, my trading and one of the most challenging, <clears throat> excuse me, points of responsibility for a lot of traders is, is taking the loss. That's probably one of the most challenging points where we have to take personal responsibility because nobody can, can push the button Ross and, and truly make the trade a loss uh, except for me. And I'm, I'm potentially the last person in the world that wants to do that because I'm the only person in the world who's going to be affected in that instance, that trade, by making it a loss. So I, we can talk about this in more in depth another time. I'm not going to go into stop outs now, but that is one of those things, isn't it, right? It is. Um, it, we've got to take that responsibility. And, and this is where Jeffrey's saying the value of understanding this truly the value because when i see the value the gain in effectively doing that i won't struggle as much with doing that unfortunately some of us have to learn the value of it by going through a process of of just not doing it at all and it costs us until there's a tipping point what we're trying to do for you today which by the way is the goal of all our coaching right if you're connecting with some of these things and you're saying, Blair, I need some process in this very thing, I would just say, okay, what level of coaching do you have? Because these are all pieces of the puzzle that we want to work with you on, okay? So you need to, to look at getting into something like that if you don't have that already. But it's really, really important that we adopt these as soon as possible because 
um, we can learn from someone else's cost or we can learn from our own, which of course we don't want you to do, so. Absolutely. Uh, so guys, I've seen a couple of comments that are moving through the chat. Remember, if you're very new to trading, some of these you're, you're saying, well, I haven't experienced that, I'm not quite sure. Take some notes, take some screenshots, go back and listen to this in the in, when it's, it's recorded and offered to you because you're gonna see some wisdom that's here that as you do evolve in your trading, you can come back and reflect on this and maybe even learn through market corners and the study groups and the other things that you're part of in your educational uh, relationship with Tradeway, how not how to get ahead of the game. That's the whole idea of this. So this is I, these are things I wish I knew when I was in trading for a month so that I wasn't having to learn them or learn them the way I did, which was over months and years. That's the whole idea of this. For those of you that have been around for a while, then you see the wisdom of what you've experienced and the insight into potentially how you would make adjustments here. I really like Jeffrey's second comment here. I would like to have had a better understanding, and that word is so powerful, understanding of how the strategies actually worked and how options gained and lost values. And I would add here within the strategies. Mm -hmm. Guys, if that's you, what I'm gonna say, you just haven't spent enough time studying. You haven't spent enough time studying, going back in your online quarter, reviewing the court, reviewing the material, writing down the questions when you're not understanding something, writing down what you're not sure of, and then coming back around either to the next course, coming back around to a coach, coming back around to the market corner, and saying, you know, I read this in the book or I watched this on the course. I'm just not quite understanding what it is. I can't help you learn if I don't know where you're not understanding certain elements about the strategies. But I will tell you, and believe me, you don't have to have a PhD in anything to become a good trader. But there is an evolution of learning. No matter what you do for your career. If I said, what do you do? And you said, well, I, I own a construction company. I said, well, do you think I could take a weekend course, kind of learn some things about construction, then jump out and do what you do? And you would laugh at me. Many of you work in areas that you know when you got your education to do what you do, you weren't the best at what you were going to be in that area of your work then. It took the experience, the practice that came with it. Why do we think that trading is anything different? Why do we think that we can go to a two-day course and then become an expert at it on day one and go out there and jump in the market and risk a lot of money? Because I'm a professor in a physical therapy program. We spend 24 months teaching students how to work with the patients and what they do. But before they go out, they spend seven months, seven months in a mentored practicing state, practicing what they spent two years learning before they then graduate to go do it independently and then they're still just new graduates. Yep. So I believe that one of the things that many of us do as adult learners, which is this group, is that we don't spend enough time simply digging in and understanding, learning, and understanding how our strategies work. Lack of understanding, and I see it every day in my students here, lack of understanding creates lack of confidence, potentially conflict, and then it creates the emotion of uncertainty, which drives fear. Our students do not want to come in and demonstrate what they're supposed to learn because they are fearful of being judged of what they don't know. Well, guess what? When you trade, when you trade, especially if you're trading with real money, the market will show you over time how much you know and how much you understand and how much you don't. So it's like you want to take the test before you do the homework. That's what I think Jeffrey's comment is here. I'm taking the test, trying to trade the strategy or doing nothing, even worse, doing nothing with the opportunity that you have. I take the test before I do the homework. So I encourage you as a teacher, which is what I am in my full-time job and what I am with Tradeway, that whatever strategies, and oh, by the way, you don't have to be a good option step two trader to be a really good spread trader. That is not a requirement. You need to be a decent stock person in terms of evaluating the technical analysis of a stock, entry point, support, resistance, the basic fundamentals of step one in order to start to be successful at any of our strategies, step one through step 26. But I do, I really like what Jeffrey's saying here because Jeffrey and I have kind of grown up in trade way along the way. And as I got better at understanding how the strategies worked and how options gained or lost value, 
I became more comfortable with them, which gave me more confidence to apply them and then learn and be and then work towards success in actually trading. But we will shy away. We will have fear of engagement, of participating and yes. doing things that we don't understand. 100%. Uh, I would like to have had coaching available and been able to take advantage of it. Now, guys, Jeffrey and I started at a time where the engagement that you had with Tradeway from coaching is was so different than it is now the significant investment financially and by resources and time to move to our online platforms and be able to have coast to coast engagement with you. There's no reason. And I would tell you, let me put my teacher's hat on. There is no reason that any of you should not understand or being step or, 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 or not be progressing forward with your education because of lack of ability to get questions answered or to get engaged conversations about it. Between our online study groups, between the community pages, which have the ability of sharing our entire student body and trainer and coaches body, between the market corners, the only reason, this is not picking on any person unless it's going to kind of poke you a little bit, the only reason you're not progressing in your understanding and your knowledge in your trading is because you're not engaging in the opportunities that are presented to you on a weekly basis. And maybe that means you haven't placed it as a high enough priority to be engaging in what you initially had for your goals for your trading education. I I'll wish just to throw trading. in one quick thing. Sure. You, you guys, you guys have heard me most likely and, and probably other coaches too, but you've, you've likely heard this from me. Um, you know, I'm, there's two groups on here right now. Some of you have access to coaches and some of you don't, right? You just don't yet. But if you do, everything we're going over here, right? There's an opportunity to say, I'm going to take one or two of these for you that stick out. And you're going to say, all right, I am going to get some breakthrough in this fourth quarter, right? Or you could say next year, but now there's no time like the present, right? Like I'm going to get some breakthrough in this, this year, I'm going to work with a coach. I'm going to, and maybe that is literally your, your number one. I don't use coaches, right? It, it, maybe it's a, a vulnerability thing. Maybe it's a convenience thing, whatever, whatever the case might be. Uh, some people tell me, Blair, we just feel like maybe you guys are so busy and it's like, that's why we're here. We're literally here for this reason, right? So um, the door is wide open for those of you that have access to coaching to absolutely utilize it uh, as much as you want. That's what you have. There's trader pros on here. You have that access to that coaching. Um, and then for those of you that don't have it yet, we can get you that. We can get you that access. This is you know, a membership. Blair. Blair, I'm glad you Go really ahead. said. I'm, I'm glad you really said that there, because guys, if you, if you, if your educational structure with Tradeway is at a point that you don't have access to the coaching or the the market corners, the online study groups that you think would be beneficial to you, that's exactly why we are a education company. That opportunity is there, and if you know, if you know in your heart, or you have the idea that you think that that is would help you. And you're committed and disciplined to your own trading education and learning. Maybe that what you simply need to do is reach out and allow us. And Blair, you may, I mean, maybe now would be a good place that you could let them know how they would be able to do that. That piece is widely available for you. And it's here for you to, for us to be able to meet you in a supporting coaching level. Coaching isn't necessarily one-on-one -on -one and show me your trades and let me be over your shoulder and bang you on the head when you do things wrong. It is a nurturing, educational, motivational coaching structure. That we have. Some so, of you um, have been posting in the comments even that, you know, you know what to do, but it's a matter of having the energy to just keep doing it. Like somebody said, uh, I know to do that. It's just hard to make myself do that all the time. That's another aspect of coaching. That's a huge part of coaching. So yeah, 100%. And I'll post something here in a minute where you guys, if you're not in that level, you can do that. We're going to continue, right? We're not done yeah. here. Yeah. Um, and, but and I'm gonna we're going to we're gonna just say, this is, this is an excellent time for those of you to be thinking, uh, this is something I need to do. You're just at that point. This is what you need to do. Benefit of a membership, 
You guys probably know this. If you don't, you can join and it's a month membership, right? You don't have to sign up forever on these, these memberships to get that. Our memberships are really the support aspect of our program. So you can get that coaching. Uh, give it a try. Give it an opportunity. Bring some coaching into your life and see how that can transform these very things instead of trying to do them on your own. Okay. Um, community pages make it very, very easy to do. Okay. So I'm going to pop a link in here and we can talk more about that in a little bit, but coaching needs to be on the table, right? That's a huge advantage. Yeah. So I'm going to come back around here with a couple of comments that are made that guys, you're, you're folk. And this is something that I was mentored on. You're focusing on the problem and not the solution. So Ileana said, I don't use coaches because I'm at work during the same hours coaches are available. Well, Ileana, you could absolutely send in an email. You could absolutely post something on the community page to where in the timing of how communication can be shared. You're right. You may not have the ability of talking to a coach during working hours all the time, but by communication of email, you ask great questions on the market corners. Market corners is another form of coaching. How many times have I asked if you've got a trade that you want us to look at, bring it up. We can look at it. We can evaluate it. And that you ask a really simple question, having access to coaching, but I'm not sure really how to use it. Communicate with them. Send in an email. Say, here's a question I have. Somebody said something about a, having a silly question. There's no such thing as a silly question for a coach because if you're troubled by it, we want to look out. We want to look at ways to be able to fix it. It used to be many years ago that, yeah, the availability of coaching or the ability of being able to get questions answered or, or, or trade eva trades evaluated was kind of limited to the office hours. That's not the case anymore. We have multiple opportunities now by, I mean, guys, people have sent me questions or sent me information about trades and I've ended up using their examples on market corners. Of course, their name isn't there unless they allow me to share it. I use their name on market corners to use their experiential trade as an example to teach everybody else. So we have ways to help you. We just need you to reach out and say, how can I be helped? And if you don't have coaching, Blair's going to show you a way to engage in that in a non-threatening, minimal financial obligation for you to get that next level that you need. Uh, Jeffrey says, I wish I had paid less attention to the news and more attention on the direction of the chart. You've heard him say this over and over again. Yes, news has some influence, but it's kind of back to what Jared said. The chart is in front of us. It's telling us what the market is doing. <clears throat> and actually right now in September and October, if you listen to the news, especially before maybe the middle of September, the news is saying one thing, but the market through the chart is telling us something very different. And we make money or we lose money based off what the chart is doing. Yes, market tone is important. But even the biggest part of market tone is what's the S&P telling us the market is actually yeah. doing. Yeah. So this is something that, yeah, I mean, you know, news, opinions, oh my gosh, there's a million of them out there. What's the only real truth? The real truth is in the chart. And there is a skill set of looking out of how to incorporate news. But I see so many comments sometimes, Blair, from people taking a piece of news or what somebody says in the news, and they're now doing what we've already talked about earlier, they're now making an expectation of the, what the market should be doing because of the news, as opposed to just with probability, but no guarantee, looking at what the market is doing. And guys, this is what I had to, I'll tell you, I had to work on a lot when I was, when I was going through my first, probably two or three years of trading for sure is letting, not letting the news tell me what the market should be doing, but really looking in from the chart, understanding what ha is happening in market tone and, and key news, but let the chart tell me what the market's actually doing. And this is one, Blair's the man on this. Blair, I mean, and I can see this in Jeffrey's experience. I would like to have known more about the mental aspects of trading and handled emotions better. You know, when you listen to Jeffrey, you might think that he never really had a lot of, you know, he controls his emotions pretty well. I promise you, one, we are all emotional about our money. How well we control it and how well we, or do we let it control us is a key piece. And we've done so much. Blair does stuff. I do stuff. All of the coaches do stuff about learning the mental aspects of trading. Most of us would probably say it is the bigger aspect of successful trading in the long term is the mindset aspect. The psychology aspect, not the technical aspect. That's mechanical. That's easier, 
Notice I did not say easy. Easier to learn. Definitely easy to practice. The emotional side, definitely more difficult to practice. Definitely more difficult to get your hands around it. But we all have to face it because we're human. And um, the better that we do at that, I think the better traders we become. I'm better. I'm not perfect for sure. And I continue to work on it. I'm better. All right. So these are mine. And of course, mine had to be longer because I can't say two words. And I'm just going to say this really quick, Ross, because I can see some questions there. I've popped a link in there for everybody. I'm going to redo it. Um, but before we wrap today, I'll go over a little bit more of that. So I know I got some questions there. We'll, we'll talk a little bit more. Some folks are wondering, well, which one is right for me? So let's come sure. back to that. But go Absolutely. ahead, Ross. All right, guys, I at least want to finish the last two for some exposure, mine and Blair's. Um, and then show you what the number one was. We've got about maybe 17 minutes. We need to cut this off at, at 12.30. But let, let me ask real quick, let me look at the attendees. Man, Blair, we're up to 179. Are, are we seeing any benefit to this conversation that Blair and I are giving to you today, just up to where we are now? I mean, we could stop right here. My, my comments aren't important, okay? Well, not as many as I thought maybe. Maybe nobody's the chats anything. lighten up. Okay. So if that's the case, let me lower hands. If we can get Katie to support it in the future, I'm not talking about necessarily next month. Would you like us to continue along this way of digging a little bit deeper into some of these elements that we think might be uh, beneficial? We knew that we were only going to be able to scratch the surface of, of digging into some of these. Okay. That, that tells Blair and I what we need to know. Yeah, All right. There's a lot of comments there. So Okay, good. So let me come back to that. mine. So guys, this is me speaking from my heart, from my experience to you. I've learned that you don't need to chase every type of pattern. I have yeah. my two to three favorite trade setups. That's all I need. And I have practiced them to become more skilled at those. And they're ones that make sense to me when I read charts. Do I know that I'm going to miss out on a hundred different trades? Yes, I don't care because I've become really good at knowing what system I want. I've developed my system that works. I can literally write down what my trading parameters are that I look for. And then like Blair said, I'm patient. It's like, I don't know where I heard this the first time. It's like standing in the ocean, surrounded by water, touching you 360 degrees around your body. And then saying, you know what? I'm kind of upset because I don't get to touch every drop of water in the ocean. There's just too many trading opportunities. So one of the things that helped me is I simplified. I picked my two or three favorite trade strategies and setups, pattern setups, and that's what I do. So that system works really well for me. I still look at and study other things. And if I like it better, I might bring it in. I can literally write down what I'm looking for in a chart before I ever look at the chart. This makes it easier for me to follow. And I have learned to be patient and wait for those setups to occur in stocks and then execute. It has just helped me clear out all the noise. If a chart doesn't have a really good pattern, I'm not trading it right now, guys. Trading is more difficult. And oh, by the way, I didn't, I, I, I expected it. September and October historically have greater volatility. in them. If you don't think so, Go back and look at the S&P 500 in late September and through the month of October over the last five years. And you tell me what the market typically does is exactly what the market is doing now. That's technical analysis, historical perspective. But you don't need to have 15 different patterns and five different trading setups. And, and you don't need to make it complex, especially when you're new. Pick two or three, one or two patterns or things that you want to look at in your charts, patterns that you want to look for in your trade setups and practice them and be okay with letting a trade pass by and not having FOMO, the fear of missing out. Okay. Yes, I miss out on hundreds of trades, but the ones that I select fit well for me. And that's important to me. I, I think this do. goes back to uh, Jared's comment earlier, yeah. a couple other uh, comments. Um, you know, something we call style drift, where Jared was saying, you know, 
I would change the plan too soon, not thinking in a series of trades, a sample size of trades. You know, we teach you a lot of patterns. We give you different tools over the long term. I mentioned earlier, seasons changing, right? Well, we want to make sure you have other tools for other jobs, right? I, I always use this picture when I think about seasons, the weather changes, when the weather changes, the clothing changes, right? So it's the same thing in the market. You know, when the weather changes, you're going to keep an umbrella by the door, so to speak. It's a good thing you have one. You might not use it every day, but you know when you should. It's maybe a little bit more obvious outside than it is in the market to new people, but eventually you're going to get more of that. So the thing we got to highlight here is that just because we show you more strategies and teach you other approaches and even teach you many patterns, he says two to three here, right? We teach you more than that. You say, well, why do you teach us more than that? If we're only supposed to focus on these three, why don't you just teach us those three? Because different people are going to gravitate to different things. You right. may use different things at different times. So we want to give you a mature approach over time to the market but again, micro macro, right? Like zoom in, zoom out. So we want you to have that in your tool belt, but we also want you to understand that it's appropriate to focus on one or two things. And, and I would say this, Ross, when I'm helping people who feel uh, maybe not as focused or a little overwhelmed, maybe a lot overwhelmed, um, or who just aren't seeing what they want to see. That's one of the first things I want to usually ask is, what's our approach, right? And if I start to hear, well, I look for this and I do some M's and I do some flags and I try to downtrend and I did an uptrend and I did a little bit of credit spreads, but I kind of like debit spreads, but I'm mostly focusing on puts and calls and I might get into some stock at some, it's going to be very challenging, right? So um huge deal uh, in the program. We offer a lot. But that's not because we're trying to get you to do a ton of things all at once, including, by the way, you know, I'm going to talk about Trader Pro here in a minute. Uh, there's a lot of stuff in there that you don't need to do it all at the same time, right? We've got some people on here with different programs. We're not trying to do everything all at one time, right? So that's, that's the learning earning dynamic that Ross talked about. Some of this is specific to our performance in a trade. Some of it is the way we navigate learning the program, right? The, the, the learning portion of that. Um, and we can focus in, hopefully that helps uh, lower some anxiety and confusion for some people. And again, you say, I really need a game plan for that. Okay. Whether you're in a program right now, or you'd like to be in, that's something that coaches do. It's strategy, right? Having a strategy of how to move through the program and how to apply the program for you is all a part of that coaching process. I put this first bullet point in here, actually maybe to address more the, the, the newer students. Yes, we're gonna have a system where we expose you to, to many different elements and trade patterns. Guys, I've, I've continued to study and learn those. But when you're in the beginning, if you try and become really, really good at everything, it just cre it, it creates confusion. So start with two or three. Once you comfortably understand that information, still expand, seek to, I mean, Blair and, and, and Ben and Jared and I and Jeffrey are all sitting down. I understand many more patterns and I can trade them. The reason why, remember, this was a, this was a statement that I made, not necessarily of where I am now, but where I wish I was when I started because I got too confused by trying to, I didn't ignore the importance of it, but trying to learn too much too quickly and not truly understanding any of it. That's where I got paralyzed. So yeah. I focused on a couple of patterns and it can be as simple as I'm looking for well-defined uptrending stocks with well-defined support and resistance. That pattern goes across everything. Um, so that's what Again, I mean. Again, trying to move fast, ending yeah. up making it move slower. <laughs> Yep, absolutely. Number two, my view of trading success, and you'll see some crossover with some of the others. My view of trading success has changed. It has evolved, no doubt. I strive much more for consistency, defined for me in that having reasonable managed, pro reasonable profits, profit targets that I'm looking for that 
my, in fact, Jared's comment, my perspective of now having more trades, paper and real, have allowed me to understand what that real profit goal is. And then notice that I used the word manageable losses. I mean, again, manageable losses. I don't want losses that are going to devastate my account or give me psychological heartbreak. One of the ways that I do that is what you'll see is something coming up in a few minutes. We kind of call this base hits. Blair talked about it earlier. Instead of always looking at profit or focusing only on the profit and looking for the home runs, instead of looking for the kind of trade strategy that has this massively high ROI, I have to accept that means there's certain risks to that trade that maybe don't always work. Not that I can't do them and not that I wouldn't do them, but I have really strived in the last five years of my trading career to be more consistent because one of the other things you'll hear me say many times, small things done over a long period of time are massively impactful to your financial success. Sometimes I think we look at the big numbers and we don't understand that if you're making 25, 30, 40% of the trade, that is massively powerful over time, unless your losses are 80, 90, 100% losses. Um, a trader, you'll, many of you would know that you heard Mark Wilburn say you can never go broke making or taking profits. I completely disagree with that statement. Not because it's not true, it's not complete. You can never go broke taking profits unless you do a small win, a small win, a small win, and a big loss. Big loss. So yeah, you can take profits all the time, but if you consistently are taking really big losses, you need to figure out why. Now, Mark's statement of why he was using that absolutely was powerful. And he's saying, not hitting for the fence all the time, not looking for home runs, creating trade structures through our workshop series, which prevents creating trade structures that put probability and consistency more on our side. That's where number two came from for me. By really understanding that just buying calls and puts may not be the best strategy and learning spreads for me was very powerful. Some of you may not be there yet. That's okay. Tradeway is going to be here when you are ready to advance your trading career. We're not going anywhere and we are here for you. We have thousands of students in different places across the country in their trading journey that we want to try and help to the best of our ability. But I did find, a matter of fact, even just by the cost, the, the, the risk, the dollar and cents in puts and calls, I wanted to become better at spreads. And they've been very powerful for me improving my consistency and my ability to trade in very different market conditions. But that's an evolution. If you're, a if you're just trading stocks right now, please hear Blair and I, that is perfectly okay. Yes. But you're, this is the point that you're at. We want to be here in the right way for you to move to point B, C, D, E, F, G. And that's our goal. That, that's what we do. But this did help me. Blair, we heard this with we heard this with 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 Jared. This was my independent comment. Focus on longer term trading success. Define it looking at the outcomes of, as an example, 20 trades, not the last trade or two. So we've talked about that one. But for me, that was it. Because guys, I'm I'm a probability guy. I understand the statistics better than most people, probably because of the, the world that I work in. Yes, I read the books by Mark Douglas. And yes, I identified with many elements he described. You'll hear us talking about The Disciplined Trader, which is his last book. Mark passed away several years ago. But it is, I've read the book literally cover to cover five times at different points in my trading career. And every point in my trading career, the book talked to me in a different way. Yep. My problem yep. was, this is what I would give back to you guys. My problem was is that I didn't accept the wisdom that Mark was trying to share in his book and I didn't put it into practice. I didn't do anything action wise. I was like, yeah, that's me. It's like being at the meeting and said, yeah, I got this problem, but no, I'm not really gonna change anything about it. Well, that's doing the same thing and expecting a different outcome. It was not easy, <laughs> but man, when I put elements that I learned from Blair and Ben and Jared and Jeffrey, I've learned from those guys, you bet. When I put that work to discipline to work, that's what helped me separate emotion, not eliminate emotion. And it helped me trade more strategically. And I got better consistency when I did it. 
So the wisdom that is in other information that we share, and we do talk about that book, is very powerful unless you do nothing with it. And as a matter of fact, even worse than that, if you ignore it, I find, if you ignore it and you know about it, now you beat yourself up. Now you create negative self-talk. Now you create negative patterns because you knew what you needed to do and you didn't do it. So you beat yourself up. And that was, that was a big, big piece for me. And then, then this guy named Blair gave me a few. Here were Blair's. Just how important a good process for trades are. I'm going to put these up here and have Blair speak to you about them. Not just yeah, yeah. You can just office. you can just go ahead and pop them up there. We're we're getting really close to the line here, so yeah. I want to make sure everybody hears that one that everybody had across the board yeah. too. Focus Some on of the one or two just... patterns of practice. Oh, 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 what you say here, Blair? Hmm. One or two patterns sounds like some other guy that said something um, on the previous slide. Exactly. There, there's that overlap. You know, then, because like a lot of you guys in the beginning, that's exactly what, you know, it was just jumping around from one thing to the other. Um, yeah. And this could be true of anything like, you know, and I had never thought of it this way, even personally, before the we did this last uh, boot camp 2.0, having three goals for your trading. The first one is profit. That's the goal most people think of profit. But what about uh, a process goal? What is the process, the root system? I'm going to have a goal in that, not either or, but both. So that would be point number two here. Now, this is referring to patterns. You could make that anything. I'm going to focus on this one thing. And then I think we ought to have a spiritual goal in our trading as well. But the first one there, how important good process, that's connected, right? And I've talked about that. And then if you've heard me do mind mold or anything like that, the, the decreasing fear, which actually goes back to what Ross was saying, Mark Douglas, the book there, a lot of that was very impactful for me, how we can change fear in trading, because it is typically the most common emotion in trading. Some of us are going to struggle a little bit more on the overconfidence side, but the majority, statistically speaking, is going to have this fear. And, and, you know, I've just had that. I'll just be real with you guys in my trading, but in my life, period. It's just something I've had fear of missing out. Well, it's going to translate in your trading. So having something very early on, which I didn't have at the time to say, here's how to identify when fear is really affecting your trading in a negative way. You're trying, you're trying to do it. You're applying the rules you're doing but the emotions are getting the best of you because we're not actually dealing with those in a significant way. That would be something that was pretty huge, but let's move on Ross to uh, what was that number one thing? What was that thing across the board? Last thing I want to say there before we move on, you know, we oftentimes hear that the two emotions in trading are fear and greed. Okay. The fear of loss definitely kind of makes sense. I think greed and just what Blair said, I don't think greed is greed. I think greed is a fear. Greed is a fear of not having enough or greed is a fear of missing out. That's great. So call it really greed, great. but it's just a different form of motivation, of uncomfortable motivation. All right. So here we go. And once again, you guys are maybe going to be surprised, but this was the reality. What do you think the number one trader insight was listed by almost every trader? And by what Blair said, Dr. Jim, it was his number one trading insight for success. Here's what the trader said. Trader number one, I wish I'd known to control my trade size. Another trader, a keen awareness of position size, risk management, and how that affects long-term results and odds. My comment, embrace the concept that position size is a trade, in a trade, is a key part of risk management. It is your ultimate safety net stop loss for the unexpected to happen. Yes. I wish yes. I had embraced this earlier in my trading career. I risked too much in trades early on when I was learning to trade because I only focused on the profit. Guys, in almost yep. every trade we have, it is a defined risk trade. And if that amount of money is going to impact you significantly or make you not be able to sleep at night comfortably because it could be lost, you are trading too big and it creates psychological warfare. And then you talked about Dr. Jim Blair. He said, that is the key. That is one of the key things for success so the, the trading position. Thing. Yeah, number one thing for him that he saw happen 
Uh, and then obviously in his own trading and his study in with an extensive trading and economics background was this is this is really one of your key advantages yeah. is your ability to control your exposure. Why would we not like be drawn to or appreciate this as a key advantage? Because of the last three words, in fact, I'd say the last four words on Ross's point number three there, only focused on profit. It takes, and I'm going to be dramatic here, it takes a move of God for some of us to really get to a point in our trading where we are actually getting off of those four words. Again, that's why we're here. That's what we're doing. But there's a paradox right? In trading, process and profit. And if we can get you off of only focused on profit, here's a very practical example right here, what we're talking about. And we'll transition with this. If I'm only focused on profit, I'm not going to look at position size as something that's an advantage of me to keep it small. That doesn't sound like an advantage. That sounds slow. That sounds like less money. That sounds like less breakthrough, less joy, I made an investment in my trading education. I don't want less right now. I want more. See, it's a totally different lens. So it's interpreting information in a completely different way. That's why process and profit is so important. That's why we keep talking about it this whole time. If we shift that, then we can look at this number one trader insight and go, wow, this is an advantage I have to manage and control risk so that I can stay in the game over time. And I'd rather chip away in an account. That's how I say it. I, I would much rather chip away in an account and grow it over time now than do any of the things I was doing in the beginning. You know, if you can't sleep at night, somebody say Chipotle Mexican Grill, that was Blair, <laughs> you know, and can't sleep at night. Uh, I'd way rather never be in that position again uh, and, and have this 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 truth in place so because some of the bigger impacts that we all experience as traders and that we're that that the, the five of us are reflecting here is what has happened when there is more at risk than probably should be and the unexpected non-anticipated but real event can't happen and we feel we feel the impact of that and that's why i said trade small trade small trade small big loss you could wipe out with an unexpected loss of risk the last five or six or seven profitable trades because we just didn't manage the whole trade. We only focused on the profit. What does that say about the impact of this idea? Blair just summarized it exceptionally well, okay? So guys, what are your take home thoughts? When you think about this, when you go back, you guys are gonna have some ways to think about, ah, that was crazy. I knew all that. I'm good to go. Fantastic. Please come teach Blair and I how to be better at these elements because we still struggle with these. Where are your pressure points? Where are the things that talk to you? Thank you guys for the comments when you made. Yeah, that makes sense to me. I hope that somewhere in here, all of you found two or three, hopefully not 10 or 20, two or three areas that you see as your pressure points. And then the idea is, is what is your action item going to be moving forward to help correct that, regardless if you're brand new, you wanna to learn to, you're still gonna experience these elements, but you wanna learn how to encompass these elements into your trading earlier. If you've been around for a while, how do you still need to change? And we can continue this conversation in other ways, the market corners, the community groups, future topical workshops, if you want to. So Blair, I wanna turn it over to you, let you wrap this up. And thank you, Ross, for being on with us. I'll say this last thing as we're wrapping up here. Uh, you know, some of you guys, there's an invitation here to use what you have, but for the rest of us who don't have it yet, there's a link in the chat. Okay. I've popped it in the chat multiple times just because I know some of you guys, you guys are commenting and it's, it's, it's uh, getting lost in there. Coaching. You have access to all the coaches all the coaches who've given these insights today, Trader Pro, okay? The Active Trader Online tab where you can access us, like Ross was saying, it's not just during office hours. I get messages on there after that I can go in. It gives me an alert. I'm able to coach. We share screenshots. I do most of my coaching with people right there on the community page. And you have access to that 24 seven. 
you've got an active trader tab. We're posting trades all the time. Every day, Jared's posting things in there. You've got live training. We're going into the market Monday through Thursday, live trading hour, two to three central time. Okay. These are just a couple of the things we do in these support programs. So you can join by clicking on that link. Give yourself a month, get into the program, give yourself a month, go in, say, I'm going to make a decision today to reinforce the things I just heard, not just hear them today, but reinforce them so that I can actually start to see some more traction. Wherever you're at, we want to move you forward. So this is a great way to do that. Some people are asking if this recording is going to be in the learning portal. What is that? Well, that's something you get access to in the membership. And yes, it will. It will be posted in your learning portal. So for those of you who have access, you'll get access to that. If you're looking for a replay of this, you would have this forever, right? It just gets automatically added into what we call your learning portal, where we give you all of the courses that are a part of this. If you simply click that link, Trader Pro right there, you're gonna, it's gonna take you to a page where you can open up Trader Pro and it's got some more details for you in there. You guys can always email us, okay? Support at tradeway.com. If you have any questions about any of this, you can reach out at that email. We will, I'll give you a call. We can uh, talk on the phone and, and find what's the best fit for you if you wanna do that. That's perfectly fine by me. I definitely do that with students as well but you'll click that link and that will get you set up. Okay. Appreciate you guys. Hey, Ross, thanks so much for uh, being on here today and uh, taking some time. I know you're a busy man. Uh, I think folks got a lot out of this and uh, no doubt we could probably do something like this again. Great, Blair. Thanks for your input. I want to thank all the coaches who gave input. Uh, and I want to thank you guys for giving us part of your time today and contributing to your comments. Thank you for the comments. And uh, we will talk to you guys soon. Have a great day.